So if you do a PubMed search today, you'll get 69 hits for papers and reviews on the association between vitamin D and diabetic neuropathy and diabetic painful neuropathy. And it's mainly based on epidemiological, two large epidemiological studies actually. One is the NHANES data set, which was published back in 2008, um, and then subsequent smaller studies uh, from a number of different areas in the world which repeatedly show that there is definitely an association between low levels of vitamin D and diabetic neuropathy, particularly painful neuropathy. So the association between diabetic neuropathy and vitamin D levels is that if you have a level less than 30 nanograms per mil, then you have a fourfold increased risk of painful diabetic neuropathy. And if your level is less than 20 nanograms per mil, then your risk is ninefold increased. And we showed this in a population uh, from Manchester. There are additional studies from places like Kuwait, where you'd never expect vitamin D deficiency, um, which also show an approximate two to three-fold increased risk in not only painful diabetic neuropathy, but also diabetic neuropathy. And there is in fact a, a meta-analysis uh, and review that was published uh, about a year ago that confirms overall there is a two to three-fold increased risk. So actually oral vitamin D, vitamin D3, preferably rather than D2, is perfectly um, easy to use but sometimes people worry about compliance um, and so they opt for, I know in other certain countries um, like the Middle East, for IM uh, vitamin D high doses. And in fact, we have done a study previously where we've done this in Pakistan where we gave 600,000 international units as a one-off dose, IM, and then we looked at the pain scores after that. Um, so, so that's the two main forms of, of, of administering it. But the key, key thing about vitamin D is that you don't give what I call homeopathic doses, which is 400 or 800 units. Most people would tell you that you need to be giving a minimum of 5,000 units per day. Um, and if not, some, there are some data actually suggest even higher levels, so maybe up to 10,000 for, for other conditions like breast cancer. So in terms of actually giving vitamin D and the effect on painful diabetic neuropathy, uh, the earliest study was actually an Australian study, which was again unbelievably from the Gold Coast, where you'd expect everybody to have adequate levels of vitamin D, but the average level was 17 nanograms. When they replaced the vitamin D by giving 2,000 uh, international units daily for three months, the vitamin D levels actually went up to around 28 nanograms per mil, but that was associated with about a 48% reduction in uh, pain scores. Um, so that's a 50% of it. That's as good as any current drug that we give, um, uh, you know, that's approved for painful diabetic neuropathy. In the study that we did and we published this year in BMJ Open, uh, Diabetes Research, we actually showed that 600,000 international units um, of IM vitamin D uh, reduced your overall uh, McGill pain score and also the positive symptoms on DM4 by about 30%. Um, but in that population, actually, surprisingly, uh, a lot of the patients already had a reasonable level of vitamin D, it's around 31 nanograms, suggesting actually that they'd already had replacement probably from their physicians. But despite that, when we raised it to around 45 nanograms, we got a reduction of 30%. So in terms of the risks, the obvious risk that people always, always worry about is that your patient's going to become hypercalcemic uh, because of vitamin D toxicity. Now that, honestly, is nonsense uh, in the sense that um, the published data suggests that actually you can give, uh, and there, is, uh, uh, um, there was a study, not a study, a case, two case reports from uh, the US where two individuals were taking close to a million 
units because of, uh, there's an error in the manufacturing process so the, so the concentration of vitamin D was a thousand times what it should be and um, they ended up taking that for two months and yes they became sick but as soon as you stop the vitamin D they, they normalize but that's that's you know would we're, we're never doing clinical practice and in my clinical practice I've given and I do give the dosing that I give is uh, um, 40,000 units daily for 21 days and then thereafter I give 40 or 80,000 units once weekly and I've had no problems apart from one patient who actually had sarcoidosis and uh, we didn't know about and he became hypercalcemic.